All right, hey everyone, it's LS, and this is gonna be a VOD review looking at, or a game review, looking at Korea's current rank two player at the making of this video, this is July 25th, Griffin's own jungler, Tarzan. So we will be following him through this Kindred game, and just looking at how everything ends up going. So if we're looking at this, uh, Kindred actually has a lot of pretty good lanes to gank. Uh, bottom lane is gankable, mid lane is actually gankable, which is just dependent on Zoe hitting a sleepy bubble. And then Atrox versus Kled is a very, very gankable lane. I will say that I do think that the skin is quite ugly. You notice that uh, he marks Nidalee right away. This is pretty common for Kindred players to do. Always just start the game by marking the enemy jungler. Comes over, places a ward on the enemy wraith camp, and it looks like Kled's actually going to walk right into this. Going to take some damage. Bit of damage taken from both sides. Alright, so, I'm going to be starting red, and it looks like actually this is going to be contested. Nidalee actually gets flash taunted on by Shen, so Shen was actually still sticking around. So, as, as soon as Nidalee ends up dying, this now becomes really ugly uh, for Nidalee. She's probably just going to immediately go into her blue, and now we're going to have to let's see what Tarzan ends up doing. This is really interesting that he's pathing up into top lane. And the reason that I say this is because look at what happened in top lane. So Kled actually got some of the XP. You can see the Atrox is missing a little bit of it. If the incoming minion wave, depending on how the RNG goes, if you can chunk Kled a lot, Atrox will just have the easiest time in the world inside of this lane. And you can already see that Atrox is actually down a little bit in terms of uh, life and he has a Doron's Blade and he had a Red Potion, but he already popped the potion. So, if Kindred doesn't come up to top lane, the lane can be a little bit awkward for Atrox, especially at early levels, where this is a champion that wants to dominate laning phase. Uh, Tarzan already acknowledges that he already has a lead. Um, Nidalee is already behind in tempo, down in pace, and you can see that Shen, Shen is actually pathing back down to the bottom half of the map, directly across mid lane. They have a ward on the right-hand side, so it's unlikely that, even though it's unlikely that Nidalee is going to go directly to the Scuttle Crab, um, because she can just actually do her blue safely, get the blue, clear her camps, and then go to the Scuttle Crab. Junglers that can't actually do a camp like Blue Buff or like Wolves or something to get the level 2 right away, they would actually be forced to go down to the Scuttle Crab, because Scutt Scuttle Crab does give you level 2 right away. So Tarzan comes up into top lane to put pressure onto the Kled, and ends up chunking actually quite a lot of the damage. And you can see that he's taking damage as well, but he's just doing so much to Kled, and now... Kled is going to be behind in this lane right now because Atrox is going to be able to out-sustain him as soon as he hits level 2 and he gets that E life sustain passive. So another reason that taking all the damage on the Kindred isn't that bad is because Nidalee can't be here. So if you're Nidalee right now, you probably take the blue buff, you go to the Scuttle Crab. Oh, let me turn off vision. Um, you take uh, you, you, you take the blue buff and you can take the Scuttle Crab or you can take the blue buff and immediately go into the red. So Nidalee takes the blue... You know that you saw Kindred up in top lane, and Kindred didn't have the HP to actually run from top lane all the way down into red. So what this ends up meaning is that Nidalee can actually just go to the red and then potentially actually even to Kindred's Wraiths and then uh, go backwards into Scuttle Crab. So uh, let me open up Epic 10. All right, so uh, Kindred, or Nidalee could in theory do something like this, right? This, this is actually a route that Nidalee could get away with doing. Um, if Zoe has priority for whatever reason, it doesn't actually influence this that much, but it could potentially influence the Wraiths. Uh, alternatively, Nidalee can play a very safe route and just go for Scuttle Crab and then try to go into the Wraith, but this is uh, a little bit different of a variation because then it doesn't mean that you're able to actually secure the Wraiths away from Kindred, uh, depending on what is happening in mid and bottom lane. So Tarzan actually comes into mid lane with Zoe. So let's take a look at what happened here to cause this. So we'll rewind a little bit. Okay, so 
we see a 1v1 in mid lane, and Talon actually ends up getting solo kill, doesn't use his flash, <clears throat> and then Nidalee actually shows. So Nidalee is coming out from this side of the jungle, so maybe Nidalee actually did have intention to just go immediately for the red, saw what was happening uh, in mid lane, and then averted, or, you know, came into mid lane. Uh, Tarzan was recalling, and then it looks like he's actually going to path into mid lane, and the reason that you would want to path into mid lane is because at this point, uh, Zoe cannot wave clear this as fast as she was ne she would need to relative to Talon's death timer. So if Zoe stays here, not only is she susceptible to a Nidalee gank, but she also can't push the lane fast enough in order for Talon not to be able to get back to the lane and then have control over mid lane. So Kindred actually stops her recall, sees the Nidalee, and then Kindred begins pathing into mid. And this way, they can both shove out the, the lane together, sharing the XP, sharing gold and all that doesn't really matter that much because Zoe already got a solo kill and then Kindred is still even, or actually she's slightly ahead of Nidalee. <clears throat> and now that Tarzan is level 3, begins pathing into the red side jungle, you can see that it looks like he's going to check on his red buff first and foremost, sees that it's still up, Starts it, places Wolf down, and it looks like he's just gonna maybe smite it. I, he doesn't actually have to smite it, but he is just uh, probably playing it a little bit safe. And the only reason that I said that he wouldn't have to smite it uh, is because if he doesn't think that Italy is inside of the brush, there's really no reason to smite it. Yes, he is missing HP, but he could just be a little bit greedy, especially because Kindred is uh, a lover of Red Smite. Um, he is showing intention to stay on the map and does not want to recall immediately. If he would recall right now, uh, he does have 1100 gold, so that is boots and double longsword uh, if he wants that. But instead, pass over into blue. Not the best of kiting, ends up getting level 4. And now, with the level 4 and coming fresh off of blue, we have to look at what is he actually looking at. So, look at top lane. What do you see? Well, you can see uh, uh, melee minion persisting, two spellcasters, three spellcasters persisting, so we're going to have six spellcasters plus one melee persisting uh, up in top lane. So with this, the lane is going to come into Atrox. Because of this, and because of the fact that Kled does not have teleport, if Kled gets pressure ganked right now, the lane ends. So if Kindred can come top and Nidalee can't be here for whatever reason, okay, if you can somehow just place a ward here, I actually don't know if Tarzan has wards. If you can, if you can come up here, you don't have to kill Kled. You don't have to blow a summoner. You don't have to take any XP or tax any of the minions to, to do this play. You simply come up, you shove Kled out of the lane, and then all of these minions eat all of Atrox's minions, and then the lane goes into Atrox, and then Atrox freezes. And if this ends up happening... Um, you potentially zone clad out of two full waves of farm, which is essentially a kill, just in terms of gold. And then the XP, however much he ends up losing out on. So a pressure gank is really, really strong right uh, at this point in time. Seems like Kindred is looking for it. Places a ward in the tri brush. And it looks like that's the go button. Atrox was able to successfully bait this out, and I think Kled... No, oh, okay. Manages to get away. Atrox doesn't have flash, so it's really, really hard to follow it up. Now together, because Atrox doesn't have teleport either, looks like Tarzan just wants to help shove in the wave. And you can see that he's not actually taking any of the gold. Because <clears throat> when you uh, learn to play jungle properly, um, you would understand that laners are more important than the jungler. So softens it up for Atrox, helps him shove in the wave, he gets the recall. This is not something I would advise in lower MMR, by the way. Take take all the fuck take all the CS that you can in lower MMR, um, unless it, unless you already have your items. Like so, for instance, what I would say here is like you can see that Kindred has two hundred excess gold. This is like this would be bad if Kindred was take now. Could Kindred have taken maybe two or three uh, to potentially get boots or something here? Yes, maybe. Um, but it wouldn't be just two or three. Uh, Kindred would have had to have taken like four or five in order to get the boots there when you factor in the recall timing and the passive gold. So let's, let's uh, go back a little bit. So right here, you can see the Tarzan pathing into the mark and then sees the trades that are happening in mid lane. Immediately comes over, 
ends up picking up the kill onto Nidalee. Shen is here as well. And now right after the kill onto Nidalee, you want to really pause the game. And this is important to do uh, when you're any jungler. You look around the map and you think, okay, where can I actually go right now? Where, where's the best places for me to go? So Scuttle Crab is going to be coming up. You have uh, not very worthwhile camps to take right here. Nidalee might have golems up and you could potentially steal that away, especially because if you take a peek down at bottom lane, bottom lane is going to be coming into Orianna, which means that if these camps are up for Nidalee, um, if she would end up resurrecting and then pathing down to the right-hand side of the map, she doesn't really have incentive to go down into bottom because it would be extremely difficult to actually dive Orianna underneath her tower, and Orianna is not going to be overextended because of how bottom lane is. And this is just something that you can look at with F keys as soon as you get the kill onto Nidalee. So what you're, you're looking at here is you can go boom, boom, look top, pressure cled, and then root back down into Scuttle Crab, eat Scuttle Crab, and then maybe go camp, camp, recall. What this ends up doing is it lets you then path into the right-hand side of the map at around the exact time that the bottom lane would then begin pushing back into Kai'Sa, which then opens up a counter gank or a match gank for Kindred against Nidalee, because this is also around the time that Nidalee would probably be looking to get down into bottom, eat her two camps, and then be invading Kindred. So that's the way that you can, you can look at all of that. Invading Kindred's side of the jungle and trying to obviously clear it. So like maybe you end up capturing Nidalee, uh, trying to clear one of your camps or something, or trying to get vision. <clears throat> so Kindred comes over here, she starts eating the Wraith Camp. And sees that Talon is underneath the turret, and there's more fights happening down in mid lane. So this is a little bit of a fiesta, not able to quite pick up the kill there onto Rakan. And because of uh, what just happened in mid lane that actually skews Kindred's path, you can see that Nidalea actually pathed right down into mid. So this probably means that Nidalee is now actually going to be able to path up into our golems, or we're going to see a contest over... Oh, we're going to see Scuttle Crab be contested. Talon has first priority, and Tarzan actually ends up dying. I don't know why he wasn't respecting. You can see Talon on the map, and you can see that he goes into Fog of War, and then you can see him pathing right here, and he just walks through it anyway, completely neglecting that Talon has... <clears throat> everything available, so very, very peculiar. All right, it's coming right up off fountain, and you can see that the kindred mark was actually taken. And so now, with, with where Atrox is right now, and the fact that you know that Nidalee is probably going to path into her red and get her red buff, you just want to make sure that Atrox is actually safe to shove out the wave and get his recall, because you can see at the top left that Atrox's HP is still a little bit low. Coming in, he's looking for pink wards, still path to the left-hand side of the map, come over, you clear the pink ward that is in left side river, Now with Zoe, yeah, you can see Nidalee actually path top lane, trying to potentially actually catch Atrox right at the exact moment that he would be wanting to recall. And you can see that Zoe and Kindred are actually on the same page. And when Nidalee doesn't show up right away, you can see that Zoe and Kindred were waiting. Um, I think that they think that Nidalee had maybe just recalled from the tri brush, but Nidalee is actually uh, playing quite bizarre. She did the golem camp into red, even though she's level five. I'm not entirely sure, but I would imagine that Red would have given her level 6, even though I'm not clicking on her XP. Now you can see that Kindred, with the double control ward on the left-hand side, is looking to create a gank onto Talon. And I like how um, Tarzan is actually choosing to play out the game with heavy, heavy left-side focus. Um, because Orianna, uh, trying to gank for that lane with Kai'Sa and Rakan, it's going to be very awkward for her, uh, her to be able to set up. And then, it is, if Atrox and Zoe get ahead, those are the two most important characters in this entire comp. Even if Orianna falls behind, her utility is still so powerful, just because of her abilities, like her R and her W, and obviously the shield, that it doesn't really matter if she's that far ahead. If you can put Talon and Kled behind and make sure that Atrox and Zoe scale into the mid-game, um, you're going to be in a really good spot. Now we can see that Tarzan is pathing down towards the bottom side of the map.
A bit of a team fight unfolding here. Gets hit by a Nidalee Spear, but the Shen all comes in. Kled, I don't think, is going to be able to get a remount. Atrox ends up picking up the kill. And so right here, the fight is over. I want to talk about this because we don't see this a lot in uh, whenever you turn on solo queue streams or whenever you're watching a VOD. People won't actually talk about it. When kills end, you want to just put your eyes on the minimap and ask yourself, okay, you know, what are their death timers? What can I do during this? And are we going to lose out anything if, if I take a temporary loss in tempo? So Kindred could recall and Kindred could get items and then come back on the map and do something like this. But if Kindred doesn't have anywhere to be, right? Kindred doesn't have an obligation to path top lane immediately. Kindred doesn't need to get Zoe the blue buff immediately. Kindred can't reliably go over to her camp immediately off of a recall. These aren't things that Kindred has a say over. So when the kills happen down in bottom lane, Kindred can actually just look to do golems, and then depending on what the state of mid lane is and then exactly what gold Kindred has, Kindred can maybe even actually go and do rates and then do recall. What this will end up doing is it'll mean that she'll actually reset and path into the blue at around the same exact time that Atrox would be pathing back up to the top side of the map. And then because of all the chaos that just unfolded back into bottom lane, it means that Kindred can be on the left-hand side right around the time that the push back into Orianna and Kindred's bottom lane would be starting. So that if Kindred decides that she wants to path back into bottom, there's, a, there's more than enough time that's still available for that kind of rooting. Some people on Twitch shot are a little bit angry with my pronunciation for Atrox, so I will uh, stop pronouncing it that way for the uh, remainder. So A. Atrox is now recalling, and he's pathing up into top lane. You can see that Kindred is actually still just consuming the golems and potentially going to path up into the Wraith camp. Don't actually know why, uh, like, so right here, you can see that Kindred actually has jungle item, and you can see that there's no obligation to get Zoe the blue buff immediately, so I think this is actually suboptimal pathing. Um, we're not just going to sit here and say that everything this person does is correct. Could have easily have just recalled, and then pathed into the blue. And if you end up doing that, Aatrox would have been able to go up to top lane, cause the top lane to crash, and then eventually come back into him at around the exact time that you would hand off the blue to Zoe. And then the wave can be manipulated by Aatrox uh, at an exact time that Kindred would be able to consume the Gromp or maybe even the Wolves and just be in close proximity. Because again, it's unrealistic that you can actually go over to the Mark and there's no Scuttle Crab to actually contest. Alright, so now the Mark actually ends up spawning on the Gromp, and this is at a pretty good time where you can see that Zoe's going to have priority in mid, and Talon was actually really low. Zoe also places a ward on this and sees that there's no Wraith camp, and then when you look at the state of top lane right now, there's basically one of two things that can happen. Either Nidalee appears within the next couple of seconds, or um, there's going to be a match gank or a counter gank that can happen in bottom. Or using Zoe's priority, Nidalee can or Kindred can actually invade Nidalee's right hand side jungle, look for the Gromp, and look for Wolves. These are basically all the things that can end up happening. Instead, he actually comes over to an Ocean Drake, and it's 11 minutes in the game. This isn't probably something that the uh, the enemy team would you know think about. Oh well, I should probably go and check. Okay, well there's the counter and match gank. So this is the original thing that I, I talked about should happen. Uh, I don't know why Tarzan started on the Ocean Drake, because it, it, it's objectively just a terrible dragon, uh, and it doesn't really have any usage early on. Um, had he actually ran down to bottom uh, right away and not started the Ocean Drake, this whole fiasco probably could have been avoided.
And now we'll just, we'll see what ends up happening next. So I, I've disagreed with uh, two of the, the, the major paths that he's taken in the last couple of minutes. Someone from Twitch chat asked a pretty okay question. Um, Ocean Drake is good pre-15 minutes. The problem is, is that the game is so accelerated due to how many kills are taking place that lane phase is very close to being over. And then there's multiple champions on Kindred's team that doesn't actually benefit from Ocean Drake. The only ones that really benefit are going to be Zoe and Orianna. Uh, Kindred herself, Atrox, and Shen basically get almost no benefit. Okay, so Aatrox is going back up into top lane, and the lane is going to eventually come back into him unless he chooses not to have a freeze happen. Um, because Nidalee ends up getting spotted down in bottom, he should actually be fine to still skirmish and duel with Kled. And now Kindred is going to be able to get the Scuttle Crab with Shen. And you can see that there's still the ward on the Wraith camp of Nidalee, so they're going to be alerted as soon as Nidalee appears there. And Nidalee is actually still inside of Kindred's jungle, so this is really interesting. And you can see that it doesn't look like Tarzan actually knows what he wants to do. Just waiting a little bit, ends up finding a Rakan, uh, ends up getting the flash out of him, and now they're going to be able to push this on into bottom lane. See, these, these are the really weird things. Uh, th these are the solo queue jungle uh, jungle things that are really bizarre. Is like right here. Okay, let's just take a look. So bottom lane is actually going to push into Kaisa. So bottom lane will push into Kaisa, and this is fine because Orion is already hitting the minions. All right, Tarzan makes a decision to hide inside of the dragon pit, and the only reason that I can think that this is is because maybe. Uh, you know, she does well. Obviously, he expects that Rakan maybe comes to check it because Rakan is absent from bottom lane. Rakan has no reason to be mid, and this is the only logical pathing. Comes over here, Wolf hits him. He goes over the wall, and then Rakan flashes away. But Rakan kited back in, and during this whole time, Shen and Oriana are able to pick up a kill on Tsukaisa. So just watch how this happens. Okay. Really, really good capitalization there. And then because of this, Kindred's able to consistent, you know, push on and just pincer Rakan underneath the turret. Yeah, they see Rakan coming to, to do the ward, so he waits inside of the, this. But you can't know exactly where Rakan's going to go. You can try to leap over the wall and get onto him. Like you can see right here, Right? He waits inside of this brush, but you can't know exactly where Rakan's going to ward. There's nothing to prevent Rakan from just warding right here. But it's a, it's a neutral slash positive. There's nothing really that you lose too big here. So, like, if Rakan... Uh, why isn't Epic Pen working? If Rakan comes here and just places a ward here and then goes back over, okay, you don't really gain anything. What you can gain is if bottom lane crashes in the wave and Talon doesn't actually make for the roam, you can then just still go over and you can threaten a dive. Especially if Nidalee, who has every reason in the world to be on the left-hand side of the map, is indeed on the left-hand side of the map. So then you can coordinate a dive. If uh, Rakan actually comes further in to try to get a ward on the Dragon Pit, you can potentially just kill Rakan yourself. They end up picking up both kills, and now it looks like they're <clears throat> going to get the turret. Shen is spam pinging that he has his R ready. And now, when you're Tarzan, you know that Nidalee is on the left-hand side of the map. You know that she's probably taking her Wraith, she's probably taking her Blue. You don't have any reason to go there, and you see that the Gromp's not up. It's not a, a good usage of your time to just do the Wolves. Because right now, if, if you do the Wolves, you do this, and then by the time you clear the Wolves as you kite down... The Kai'Sa and the Rakan are almost back, which means that you've lost out on tempo control. Instead, uh, Kindred comes over and wants to start on the Ocean Drake. I, I think this is really bad, but whatever. Um, 
The other thing is if you go into your red and you take the red, if Nidalee clears out her left side jungle and then moves into the left hand side, if Talon retains priority, it means that Nidalee can actually potentially come in here or here and get either camp. So I think that the decision to actually get Ocean Drake is quite bad, especially because of the game timer right now. Um, there, there's not really a very big point to this uh, because Rift Herald is actually the major neutral objective now. Ocean Drake is not something that the enemy bottom lane should be interested in getting, and it just does not have enough worthwhile value for either team. It was very surprising to actually see it <clears throat> being prioritized. AA Trox is recalling, and now he's going to be going bottom lane. And he'll now be put in the lane against the Kai'Sa and the Rakan. And Kindred is choosing not to recall at all. Ends up pathing immediately onto the left-hand side. And the, the reason that uh, the recall suggestion is there is because you know that your bottom lane is resetting. So if you know that your bottom lane is resetting, you can go up to top at the same time. Orianna goes like this, Shen and uh, Kindred just go like this at the same exact time. You get the vision together. The problem is, is that you would have to do this recall right here so that you can beat Nidalee to the left-hand side. Um, what it ends up meaning, though, is that you can't get your red buff. You, you would end up having a very delayed red buff. Okay. Oh, camera's moving around like crazy. So now Rift Herald should actually be the major priority, but first you definitely want to get Zoe, her blue buff. You spot Nidalee in top, and you can see that immediately the pathing has actually changed. Comes up here, sweeps the brush, and now what they should be looking to do is set up, you know, some sort of a bait. Ends up coming over here. Okay, sees multiple people with that sweeping lens. Places a pink ward. Sees Nidalee. Nidalee is drunk. That was one of the worst spears I've seen in a really long time. A Aatrox has now successfully rotated mid, so you know this is definitely not Mech's Wildo. Nice. So basically, <clears throat> right now when you're Kindred, everything that you want to be thinking about is just about the left-hand side. If you're Aatrox, and the way that you help out the team is you come here, you shove wave, you then you, pro uh, you move mid. So let's take a look at what's happening here. So they end up starting the Rift Herald. A Aatrox is moving back into bottom, but then Kled alts mid. And at this point, I mean, A A Aatrox actually goes in, and he casts his ultimate, and it looks like everyone wants to take a fight. Shen's ultimate comes out, and this actually made Kindred and Co. stop taking the Rift Herald, and it's a very, very chaotic fight that ends up unfolding in mid lane. So the original intention to take the Rift Herald is very, very, very good. They see that Kled reacted to the ultimate, Atrox was already nearby, and they were able to turn the fight with Shen's ultimate, and then Orianna and Kindred were both able to get there in time. Very, very clean fight, and now they see that Talon is down below, and if you're Kindred right now, maybe you actually check for your mark at this point. You can push on for tier 2 turret in mid lane, and but then I think that you actually break to the right and check for the mark in the blue buff. Um, Maybe because of the game timer, you try to capture the Herald, but I don't think so. I think going for Wolves and then going for the blue buff is ideal. Okay. Ends up getting all that good jazz, clears out the Wraith camp. Um, because right now tempo is resetting and the enemy team has been given uh, priority, uh, what's going to happen here is they come fresh off a of fountain. They don't have anywhere to go to. They could maybe try to rush to the Herald, but that's not a good idea. Because of this, uh, Atrox needs to get out, down into bottom, Orianna needs to reset top, Zoe needs to get into mid. Kindred and co. do not have an obligation to be anywhere that involves them crossing the river. Because of this, 
uh, Kindred could actually eat Wraiths and then path down into Golems and clear the Golems and then recall. Because Nidalee is never in any universe going to cross over into Kindred's left side jungle without any knowledge of where is Kindred. So if, if you view this from Nidalee's perspective, right? So let's go into Nidalee's camp, okay? Look at how their vision looks right now. All right, Nidalee gets over here onto the right-hand side, sees that all this stuff is gone, clearing the Gromp. And now you're never venturing into this territory. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what it looks like. You don't want to potentially come in here and then Kindred's here, and then you get forced out of the jungle, and you get forced back into your jungle, and now they suddenly have control and priority over left-hand side river. You can't risk running into that situation. So because of this, Kindred should be able to actually take advantage of that and be able to do this camp into this camp into reset, because again, it's okay for her to have a delayed uh, respawn onto the map following the recall. Sees the fight happening down in bottom, quickly comes over, kills Kled. <clears throat> and now you're gonna end up recalling, pathing to the left hand side of the map, not gonna actually find a jungle, and I think it's actually too late to start the Herald without your teammates being in position. So, recalls, and it looks like the purchase, he's deciding, ends up picking up Phantom Dancer and a Longsword and Null Magic Mantle, and then sells off the refillable for control wards. Atrox is still pushing down there in bottom lane. they're actually able to get the Herald. And let, let's look at how this Herald is allowed to be captured. So from this point, you can see Kai'Sa. She already has her Guinsu. Nidalee, everyone has priority. If Kai'Sa, Nidalee, and Shen kill this, and then they back up, and they just go over to the Herald immediately, and then Kai'Sa and Shen path into mid lane, and Talon takes the wave up into... Or not Talon. Uh, Kled takes the wave up in top, then Harold is denied. But if you don't do this, this situation that just unfolded, where they, they get an objective, but then they back up and recall and they can't get to the next major objective, if you're in Twitch chat and you're watching this live, you know this situation all too well. You've seen it in all of your silver, gold, and platinum games, where you lose mid inhibitor and then you get Baron. Or you get mid inhibitor and then you lose Baron. So this is a very similar situation where the same thing is basically happening just on a lesser scale. Ends up getting the Rift Herald. What is the dragon? Mountain. Probably should not look to use the Rift Herald until they get the mountain. And now you can see that Tarzan is actually just pathing towards his red. Should be able to get the red and then go into the right-hand side river, look to get the Scuttle Crab, and then set up to get the Mountain Drake. Oriana and Shen should start pathing to the Mountain Drake. And, okay, looks like he's doing that.
I just, I, I had to rewatch. Oh, <laughs> 0 0.25. Oh, man. After that kill on Tanidalee, I think you go top, you cast Herald. Looks like they're even actually going to get a pick off on her. Ah, you know what? No. Top, top lane's too bad because there's no minions. <clears throat> you don't, you, he, uh, definitely did not need to cast Herald. This is actually really bad. Th this Herald cast is truly very bad. Because the opponents can't stop Baron anyway, so you can just do it. They don't have a smite, and there's no universe that they can come in. And now the Herald's just going to go to waste. You easily could have captured Baron, held on to the Herald, fixed mid or top lane, let Atrox split bottom with Teleport, and then use the Herald plus Baron minions to end the game. So it doesn't matter that much because it's solo queue, but in competitive, this would be a very, very bad move. Now they're coming over, they're getting the Mountain Drake. And then after this, probably just go into bottom lane as Orianna and Zoe shoved in mid. Join up with the teammates and then end the game. That was a really weird ward. They're clearing out vision. Could also just go mid. Uh, looks like there's a pretty decent wave. They go onto the right hand side, maybe give the blue to Ori. No, not today, not today. And, I mean, this is going to be the end of the game. They're up 10,000 gold. Not much more to talk about. But the early game pathing options and how some of the chaos affected it and caused there to be some alterations to them. I mean, that was pretty That was pretty nice to talk about. Nice Kindred Ultimate right here at the end. And Italy getting sucked in. Looks like this is going to be the end... All right, and this is the final push onto the Nexus. I see, yeah, this is it. All right, so that was it for this game. Um, there was definitely a lot more chaos than I liked in this. Um, the next time that I, I review Tarzan, I hope that uh, the game state is not as chaotic, um, and I think that we'll, we'll get to talk a lot more about different types of pathing. Um, because this game, we got to talk about a lot of pathing, but then fights were unfolding that affected them. Uh, and made certain paths have to stop dead in their tracks. There was also some weird paths that he did uh, in the mid game that I think were suboptimal. Um, obviously the one with the Ocean Drake, uh, because uh, I just don't understand why there was a priority on it at that point. But nonetheless, I, I still think it was a pretty, pretty okay game.